Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world. And actually for me, for the first time doing this program, it's morning. But for our guest, John Spender, you're in, in Bali, in Indonesia, aren't you, John? So is it about 3.30 in the afternoon with you? Yes, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here in Bali. And so, yeah, it's been a fantastic day. It's really warm. Summer every day. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, don't make me jealous. <laughs> it's still pretty chilly here in the UK. So welcome to Gift of Healing TV, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sarah Jane, your hostess, and our guest this week is John Spender, who lives in Bali. And Jackie, good morning, Sarah and John. Jackie, as in my sister, has joined us, John. And you know Jackie, don't you? I do, yes. Hello, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good to have you on the Let me introduce John to you and then we'll go into to the program and we'll ask John to share a little bit about himself. After having worked through his own childhood abuses, John has come to recognize that there is a time to heal for each and every one of us to face what haunts us and prevents us from fulfilling our destiny. Today, having travelled to every continent except Antarctica, he has developed a richness and appreciation for life. John has helped over a thousand people through this, his one-on-one -on -one coaching programmes and many more from stages through the, around the world. He walks his talk having invested over 115k on personal development coaching and speaking programmes. He is an international speaker, author and coach. After having worked with gurus in India and with Native American Indians, he has a unique process for us later on in the call. So John, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us from Bali today. And what I'd love you to do is just to share a little bit about how you got to where you are, just so that people get a chance to know you a bit better. Absolutely. Well, I'll give you the short version because I, I probably could talk uh, for, for a long time, but the short version is that uh, I had a, a number of, uh, I had actually had a, a, a quite a very, I had a happy childhood. I had some, I'd, I'd say 95% of my childhood was happy experiences. And I think like most families, you know, you just do the best you have with what, with what you've got. And I was no different in that respect. Uh, I was lucky enough that I had, was influenced uh, early on by my grandparents, and my father, my grandfather, taught me uh, a lot about uh, life and, and fair exchange. I had a number of isolated incidences that happened to me. It was really it was a series of isolated in incidences that were quite nasty in nature between the ages of three and seven. And I basically suppressed those experiences because, you know, as I said, largely my childhood was amazing. Like I had a very happy childhood. It was just a number of experiences that I pretty much, being an adult and um, making my way in the world, I built a brick wall around those experiences. And a part of my heart, a part of who I was, uh, started to, to rot inside because I wasn't noticing the 5%. And then the, that 5%, um, was it was was affecting the was it affecting the rest of me, and it was manifesting in uh, behaviours that just weren't really in alignment with who I truly was and my true potential, and what I was capable of actually doing. And I was manifesting in uh, drinking way too much alcohol. I was taking um, uh, recreational drugs, and I was just really, you know, it wasn't. It was just any social behaviour. And not that I was in trouble with the law or anything like that. It was just behaviour just wasn't conducive to, you know, to my potential and what I was capable of. And it really, I reflect on it now. I was just self-medicating for a, for long periods of time and went through, uh, you know, lost the business uh, because I didn't take uh, ownership of those things that had happened to me. I didn't know how to express. I didn't know how to talk about what had actually happened. And I didn't know where to turn to, and it was a, a real challenging time for me. So basically, not knowing how to deal with my own pain, I was self-medicating. And really, some turnings was just some mentors 
joining a coaching program, learning. A, I was in a transition. I had a landscaping. I lost my first landscaping company. Then I lost a. Then I've reached at five years. I lost total loss of my confidence, and you know, didn't know how to interact socially, and I just felt overwhelmed with shame and, and guilt and fear, and I was doing depression really successfully, <laughs> and almost too successfully, and uh, it was like I just felt like a dark hole, never going to get out of, and just step by step and doing different personal development programs and working on myself and reading books and, and just taking an interest in my well-being and, and wanting to be in a better place and having the determination that I knew there was a better place and, and wanting to get there. It took a long, long time. I felt like I was never going to get out of where I was. And I knew that there was so much more to life, but I just wasn't seeing it. And I there's just a number of different uh, events that happened that really... I gained some momentum that steered me in, into the right direction. I met a girlfriend, she was from the Czech Republic and I started traveling and that really just started to develop my passion for traveling and my love for traveling. And it was really just a heart's desire one that I've been suppressing for a long time. Doing a whole bunch of different personal development programs and then I took the leap of faith again on myself and started my business again, another business in, in landscaping and, and that started to take off and I started to gradually build up my confidence. And then I was in a transition, I thought that I, just, I want something more, that I'm being called towards something more with my life, I just didn't know what. And I went to a seminar and I heard and uh, was a future mentor speak. And, you know, have you ever just, I just heard him speak. I was like, wow, like what he's saying to me really makes sense. And it was communicating to a deeper part of myself. I was like, this scares, I'm really, really scared right now hearing all this. It's almost like I was scared. I was hearing my potential and I was like I was being called to step into that and it was, I was terrified. Lucky, I was actually going to get up and walk out of the seminar because I was that terrified. But lucky enough, I, you know, I, I stayed where I was, and you know that was an encouragement from the speaker. I guess he saw that I was struggling a little bit, and he he encouraged me to to stay. I'm glad I did. I joined his program. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. it was really ex at the high end of the scale. It was so worth it, and was really the first time that I had a, a major investment in myself. And yeah, like the return was me and that was the first time I did that and I it took a leap of faith and I'm so glad I did and it was really my heart communicating to me and when the first time I held, it wasn't so much a voice, it was more like a feeling and I was just, it was like a just a knowing. I knew I had to make this decision although it just, it was the most terrifying thing that I could possibly do. I, I guess it really was the first time that I took a leap of faith from my heart. You know, I've been done a lot of um, skydiving, uh, bungee jumping and all that sort of adrenaline sports and things and snowboarding and so I wasn't really afraid to do those things but when it came for me and to actually step into my potential and to trust my heart, that was a really, really scary experience for me and, and something that, uh, yeah, I still get scared today <laughs> but it's much easier, it's so much easier. Uh, the yeah. highs are higher and the lows are higher. <laughs> and, and that's brilliant and, and I think it's really essential that people who see us and they think, oh, they're confident, they, they've got it all, but whatever, helping people to realise that we've all been there, you know, maybe not in the same way as they have, but we've all had that down that helps us to come to the, to the up. You know, we've all had to help ourselves connect to ourselves. We've all had to learn to follow our heart. You know, to let go of the head. Um, you know, it's been there to protect us for so many years. But the problem is, it's no longer protecting us. It's actually probably doing more damage than protection. And it's helping to to, to change all that. So your heart opening process, because that's what it's about. It's about us learning to trust those desires, those feelings from our heart, and if those feelings of fear from the heart don't do it, 
but the feelings you of fear you were feeling at a guess were actually head fear feelings because your yeah. head didn't really want you to get it right. <laughs> Well, I guess it just wanted to keep me safe, and I think that that's a very good point that you say, that the mind wants to keep us safe. That goes back to the Neanderthal days, and there's a part of the brain that really, that's that's its job. It's the flight or flight, and it goes back to the caveman era, whereas, you know, you had to really be alert, otherwise you could be someone's lunch. And we still have that component of the brain. It's not as necessary, and sometimes it does keep us safe, like there's two types of fear, you know, you might you might have heard that, you know, there's a fear that keeps us safe, you know, where we're going across the road, you know, watch out for the cars and things like that, you could get hit by a bus. That fear makes sense, but then there's other fear, fears like, well, you know, I really want to uh, start this a TV show, uh, but I'm afraid. Well, that's unwarranted fear, and that's fear that's keeping you from tapping into your full potential. So yeah. that's really the two di differences. So and that's really one very beneficial. Even when we connect with our hearts, it, it's really good for uh, it calms any anxiety. It creates stillness. It creates serenity. It's really good process to use when you're at a crossroads. If you need to make a decision about anything, you know, and you know, are you in the right job? Are you living in the right place? And asking your heart questions like that, and it's really really simple. And it's, you know, our heart is such an amazing function and organ, and we obviously we can't live without it. It keeps us alive. And yeah. most people never have a conversation with their heart. And really that's what I'm wanting to share uh, today is to show people uh, how to have a conversation with their heart, how to do it in a, in a safe way, and how to have make a difference between what is mind chatter and what really is coming from from the heart center. Brilliant. So do you, obviously we will go into the exercise very shortly, do you want yeah. to share a little bit about what we're going to do or do you want to go straight into the exercise? Because I'm actually going to hand over to you now for this and I have every intention of joining in. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Yeah, well I think yeah, giving it a little bit of uh, background, uh, it's something that I've just gotten from around the, the way, uh, you know, people like Joseph Camp Campbell talk about following your heart, following your bliss, bliss, and really doing things that you love every day, something that just makes your spirit soar, and I think that that really helps you to be heart-centered. The mind's, the mind's great and it's an important function. It's not the enemy here. We do actually need the mind to function and live and that's, you know, there's an important part while we have it. Uh, however, though, the mind can be like a two-year-old child and I think that, uh, you know, <laughs> if you let it, it'll run riot, it'll make decisions that just aren't sensible, that are uh, seeming like self-sabotaging and it's not like a two-year-old child is wanting to do anything bad. It just doesn't know any, any better. The, the mind doesn't really come up with any profound wisdom. That generally comes from the heart. And that's, you know, helping people to have a connection with their heart, make decisions that, that serve, you know, that serve them from a soul purpose, a soul perspective, and from a deeper level. Uh, also about a uh, heal. I wouldn't, well, I mean, healing in that uh, you, you're able to actually make decisions that enable you to heal yourself. So just making good choices, good decisions that steer you in the right direction. Uh, so yeah, for really for me, the, what it's done for me to have a connection with my heart is I just live a more centered life. And you know, I still make mistakes and I still uh, feel fear and I still get into the mind. Uh, I, you know, I just I'm best much better at catching myself now, and you know, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, so I've done a lot of work around the heart and one of the first things that I actually did was I worked with a Reiki master and she helped me develop a relationship with my heart because it was such a, a severe disconnect because I felt so wounded in my heart that it was just like I couldn't trust my heart. Like I would just not go there. It's way too painful, it's way too scary and it, it just it hurts. And 
I just wouldn't go to that place. So if anyone's uh, listening uh, to this recording, uh, was on the call, I know what it's like to actually not want to go to the heart place. It's like, well, I've got a heart broken heart. I feel like almost, I felt like my heart had betrayed me. And it wasn't the case at all. What I found was working with this Reiki master that there was actually a disconnect with my heart. I actually wasn't communicating with my heart. I'd actually disowned my heart, saying that's something that's just way too painful, you know, from those childhood experiences. I didn't know how to actually deal with it any other way. So basically, I built a brick wall around and said, well, you know, I don't really need you. You can just pump blood around my body, but as far as having an emotional connection, that's just way too scary for me. And so any conversation or any sort of dialogue that would go to my heart center, I would run away from that. You know, I just wasn't able to communicate from, from a place of feeling at all. And it didn't really help that I grew up in an area or it was a paradigm where you just you don't talk about your feelings, and you know you just man up and you be tough, and you know if something hurts or you've got some emotional pain. I mean, don't be such a wuss. I mean, there would be a saying that was like a swear word. It would be like harden the fire truck up, and it was conditioned all the time. Uh, we'll hear it in sports and and everything that we sort of do growing up. So that really just conditioned me that you don't talk about your your, your feelings and it was considered weak. And now, fast forward, <laughs> uh, you know, 30 years, you know, I'm more than comfortable to talk about my, what's, what's going on for me from a feeling perspective. Sometimes it still feels uncomfortable, but I'm okay expressing from that place of vulnerability. Absolutely. And a lot of the times, yeah, and a lot of times when I go through, I just want to pre-frame before I go into the process because it actually is quite simple. I just wanted to uh, give some people some distinctions about making sure that you're not too much in the mind and you're coming from that heart center. And I'll, I'll go through that in the exercise as well. So you definitely, you'll definitely feel like you're definitely going to have a heart connection here. That's for sure. And so what I wanted to share is that. Um, Although that yeah, it can be a scary place to go to the heart and things like that initially. It's like any muscle we have. The more we go there, the more we develop, develop that communication. The stronger that bond gets. For me, it was a really slow process and it was very very painful. I just kept going. I saw this lady. She was amazing. Uh, and my, her name is Simone Lee, and she was just a, an angel that really uh, helped me through a difficult, really, really difficult and dark period of my life and just came, helped me to come to terms and build a relationship with my heart. And I now consider myself a heart-centered person. And then I actually did some work just recently. What's really uh, helped uh, me develop this process was a lot of Mastin Kipp's work. He's got a, he does uh, a lot of work around the heart and intuition. Also, uh, Native American Indians, in they have a process called Medicine Wheel. So I worked with them, it was three days, and it was a lot around just being heart-centered and owning our light and darkness and being okay with that. That I really had an experience of that, you know, we're not our thoughts, that we are our heart. That we, uh, that we can connect with our heart, and that's really, when we have a heart-centered, that's closer to the truth than than anything that we could ever experience. And I'll give people an experience of that as well. So I kind of feel like I'm talking a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> I hear probably all the people on the call going, you're talking way too much. Can you get into this process already? <laughs> uh, I was doing, for this three-month period, I was, uh, we're going to start just in a minute, but I just want to give you some background. Just in a three-month period, you know, after I travelled to India, I was doing these heart-centered meditations. I would do an hour in the morning just focusing on the golden light coming into my heart and then just having a conversation with my heart. And I was literally asking my heart questions. And you know, then in the evening, I would do a meditation where I'd have white light coming into my heart and then I'd imagine vape and smoke it coming out through my back. And that was all like negative impressions and thoughts and feelings just leaving my body that would accumulate through the day. And I just started to get like super, super cent centered and just develop a, a really strong connection with my heart. 
And so that's how I really developed uh, the converse, having a conversation with your heart that is actually something you can communicate with. It's not like having a clear dialogue like we're having now. It's more generally when your heart communicates with you, it's like a, a feeling, like a strong sense of feeling, like just a presence and uh, there's just no shadow of doubt that that's, that's your heart and it's coming from a knowing place. It's like tapping into like a wisdom that you just you wouldn't be able to think of on your own, and that's kind of undeniable. So I'm guessing everyone's ready now to to do the heart process, <laughs> well and truly. Just wanted to give you yeah the background and uh, hopefully that, that helps just to wherever people are because we're all at different stages here. I'm sure. And so if you can get into a relaxed seated position. And just, you know, if you've got a cushion, something, just so you're really, really comfortable. And it is a closed eye process. And if you just want to start taking in three deep breaths. Breathing all the way in and then exhaling. Now I just want to take a time, if you just want to honour your mind that you know it is really here to serve you and that it has your best intentions and you just want to honour and thank your heart, Come expressing from a place of gratitude that the mind is wanting to serve us and it has served us in the past. It basically just wants to protect us. So now if you can place your mind just in your imagination and just place it in your left foot. And just breathing in and out ever so gently. Now if you just want to place both your hands on your heart. And just really feel into your heart center. Just take another deep breath in. Exhale. And I want you just to ask your heart a question. It's, it's good to do it out loud. Uh, just after me. Heart, show me where you are. To show me where you are. And it should respond with like a warm, glowing feeling. Generally, it's like a, a feeling, and its, it's presence should feel—you should feel an increase in its presence. And so just really connecting with that feeling even more. A nice glowing feeling and just connecting, focusing where that sensation is for you. And now ask yourself, heart, can I trust you? Heart, can I trust you? You should be generally you should feel like some good feelings. Centered, calm. And it should overall be like a positive feeling that you're getting from that question. Now ask next question is heart. 
Will you always tell me the truth? Next question part is Heart, do I always follow? Do I always And you don't want to ask that question. I do this with my clients all the time. And the answer is no. It generally feels like a little, uh, generally like a disappointment. Or the vibration just drops a little bit. It's just like a little bit of a drop. And a lot of time, it, sometimes it can just feel like a, just a little, a minor disappointment. Uh, why do I feel sad right now? Uh, can you forgive me for not following you? Ladies and gentlemen, I apologise. We seem to have lost John. Um, I don't know why. Hopefully, we will get him back. Um, and I do apologise because obviously we'd like to make sure that you get this process. And I will see what I can do about getting this, do this done again. John, we have lost you can you rejoin us I've just sent him message via Skype ladies and gentlemen I am so very sorry especially for those of you who are live on the call um, so let's hope we can get him back if not we will organize for John to do this um, right. Okay, well, I got that message, Jackie. So, ladies and gentlemen, my 
sincere apologies, technology being what it is, don't you just love it? If we can't get John back, um, I will write. Okay, I don't know what's happened. I really don't know what's happened. What we will do is I will organize a second recording of this purely of just the exercise and we will post that as well we won't be able to post them together but we will post the second exercise um i know jackie you said that you were having trouble getting back into the connection i don't know whether that's you that's back but i know we have got one person live here with us so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to give it a little bit longer to see whether we can get john back um and I really apologise, but we obviously can't do anything about technology. Um, we have to, to go with what technology um, dictates. And that's just life. But I hope that you have listened to what John has said in the introduction about living and listening to your heart. I know we've mentioned this in other of our programmes about learning to listen to our hearts and to follow our hearts and i hope that the experiences that you've received um i am just going to see whether john um has sent me a message right i'm going to try and send john a message you can hopefully still me um still see me and i do apologize for this uh john we have lost you can you sign back in please let's hope that he um he gets a chance to rejoin us we'll give him a couple of minutes uh i have the feeling that i have got my two people back with me so emily and jackie if you would like to share this any sense of what you're getting so far that would be lovely um that might give john a, a chance to get back with us so if you could that would be wonderful please i know that i know i've done a lot of work with my heart and actually having moved my heart into uh, my head into my left foot um my heart was actually in my head and it was very much a matter of it its reaction was sort of yes i can trust it um there's nothing to forgive me for um so and it will always be truthful and honest to me so that far i had got and i hope that um that yeah that, that it was the same for you so if you would like to just type in a note, I would totally appreciate that. I could try. Um, looks like his internet might have gone down totally unless he's gone out of um, out of Skype. So it doesn't look as if we're going to get John back. So, I am actually going to close the program down. I will reconnect with John as soon as I can, and we will do a recording of the actual process. I know it won't go up as a live recording, and I really apologize, but we will end up by sending out two links to everybody. So, please bear with us. I sincerely apologize technology has done this for a reason i'm not sure what the reason is um i hope you all have a wonderful day and please for those of you that are watching the recording please i will put the link to the um replay or, or to the re-recording i should say 
of the actual heart cancer process. So I know that won't be live, but that heart connection process, that exercise, we will do that. We will record that. We will get it up onto YouTube and we will send you um, out the link. What I'm going to do is I'm going to straight away go into the the replay email and I am going to hold off sending that till John and I can reconnect and we can record the process for you. So please, we will do this and as soon as I can, we'll get it up for you. So thank you for being here. I'm sorry that this has happened and I can, I can only apologize for technology. Um, I don't know what's happened. We will sort it. We will still get you the, the heart connection um, exercise and we will come back to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Next week, um, everything permitting, technology and everything permitting, as we obviously have to go with that. We have, and I want to say thank you for John, to John anyway. Thank you so much, and I, we will come back to that. Um, we have next week Margarita Vorobioff. I am delighted to have Margarita with us, sharing the sound of wealth and freedom. She works with sound energy, and with emotional freedom technique EFT. So I'm really looking forward to having Margarita with us. And the replay email will also have a connection if you want to join us for that. And fingers crossed that um, the technology will serve us at this time in the morning next week. <laughs> Folks, have a wonderful week. We will come back with the the, the link to you for, uh, we'll record it, as I've said, I promise and we will come back to you. So love, peace and light. Have a wonderful week. Namaste folks, and we will bring you the exercise, I promise. Love to you all, bye.